Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about approval processes in Salesforce. This video is going to be a bit of an introduction and an overview of how approval processes work, all from a Salesforce admin perspective. So we use approval processes to approve or reject records, and there's a bit of a flow that they follow. So we start with a submit for approval button, um, which users can use to submit a certain record for approval. And usually once a user submits that for approval, then they cannot edit it. They can't go and change it halfway through. And the reason for this is because if a user goes to submit something and then it gets submitted and then they change it, <laughs> but it still shows as if it's been approved for the changed version when it actually hasn't, then it kind of defeats the purpose, you know. It's not a very good thing to be able to do. So usually once it's been submitted, users cannot edit it anymore. Then we have some sort of entry criteria check. So there needs to be a check to say, all right, is this suitable to be in the approval stage? Or are there certain things that need to happen for this record to be able to be um, submitted for approval? You know, do XYZ fields need to be filled out? Or does there need to be a discount of more than 5%? Um, and only then would you allow a record to be submitted for approval. So we go through those entry criteria checks. Then if it passes all those, then we go into the initial submission actions. So what happens then? Um, you know, is there any sort of action that we need to take once a record has been submitted for approval? And then we go to the approval steps. And this would be either a final approval action, um, a final rejection action, or a recall action. Now, there is an option to allow admins or approvers to edit some submitted records during the approval processes, even though the record would still remain locked for users who actually submitted that record. Now, when it comes to those final approval actions or those final rejection actions or the recall actions, there are four different actions that we can choose from and these are the same four actions that we can actually do in a workflow. So if you're familiar with workflow rules, then you'll know that the four actions that we can take are creating a task, sending an email alert, um, doing a field update or an outbound message. And these four actions are exactly the same ones that we can choose for our approval or rejection or recall actions in an approval process. So all we're saying is, once the record has been approved, what actions should happen? Should there be a field update? Should there be a task created? Should someone be emailed? And then we decide the same thing for if the record is rejected or if at some point the record has been recalled. So that would usually happen if a user submits a record for approval and then they think, oh, I just forgot this one thing or oh, this has changed. So they would recall their approval um, and what actions do we want to automate when that happens. So that's a bit of an overview of how approval processes in Salesforce work. We're going to get into a little bit more of the details in our next video, so stay tuned. Otherwise, I'll see you back here next time for some more awesome Salesforce content. Catch you later.